and welcome to Rathod's IES. Today in this session, we are going to see current affairs of 7th April 2024. So here we are taking PDF of Hindu and we are picking out important articles from our examination point of view. So after picking out of articles, we are going to see like different dimensions where you can think. Okay. And how you have to see one article, I am going to explain you that and you will be learning that. And apart from that, we are going to take a topic and we are going to connect with the different subjects in your GS. So this multi dimensional approach is very helpful to clear your examination. And this is the way to read your current affairs. Because our newspaper will help to learn like what is happening around us and we have to link what is happening around us with what is given in our standard books, right? So in this way, you will be developing your practical knowledge because you are going to become a civil servant. So you should not only have the book knowledge, but even you have to know what is happening around you and you have to connect the things with static that you studied with what is happening around you then only you will be a good civil servant, okay? So that is the thing which is expected by even UPSC from UPSC aspirants. So now let us see the front page. And one more thing is today is Sunday. Don't skip this Sunday's newspaper because you will be getting lots and lots of articles which are relevant from your prelims and mains from science and technology and environment and ecology from this Sunday's newspaper. So without wasting any time, let's get started. And this is the front page and this is the first article which is relevant. Title says CAA rules allow dual citizenship please in Supreme Court. So actually you know one thing here is what is this dual citizenship that is double citizenship. So if you know the provisions of our Indian constitution it is saying that there is only one citizenship that is single citizenship. But in this Citizenship Amendment Act does not talk anything about dual citizenship. So I will be explaining this concept in detail. So before that I want to say this thing that is in Rathod's IES we are going to start offline uh, batch for your prelims come mains from July 2nd week onwards. So if you want to take your foundation course you can come and take admissions in Rathod's IES because the batch size is only 70 students and the seats are filling up fastly. So there are only very few seats are remaining. So try to come and get admission for this foundation course. And if you are not able to come for this offline in Hyderabad, then you can also take this online courses. So if you want to have any queries and if you want to clear your queries, so you can contact us on this number that is 8074765513 and even this is whatsapp number you can text us on whatsapp okay so now let us move on and let us see the first topic so it is talking about citizenship amendment act it is talking about citizenship amendment act of 2019 so under this, we are going to amend Citizenship Act of 1955 and this Citizenship Act of 1955 which is guiding our government regarding getting of citizenship and as well as losing of citizenship. It is talking about getting and losing of citizenship. So under the Citizenship Amendment Act now, Government of India said that six communities, they are non-Muslim communities from three countries, that is Afghanistan, Pakistan and Bangladesh, they are going to get Indian citizenship who entered into India on or before 31st December 2014. And what are the issues now? So issues are, the first and the foremost thing here is, so it is showing religious bias, okay. So here it is only giving citizenship for non-Muslims. So 
so there are no muslims they are going to get citizenship here and next important issue here is it is talking about these three countries but india is sharing bond with other countries like bhutan nepal myanmar and if you see here myanmar so from myanmar muslim community that is rohingyas rohingyas they are also like refugees they entered into india and bangladesh because of ethnic cleansing in myanmar in rakhine state and these rohingyas they are like muslim community and they are from myanmar so they are not included to get the citizenship so this is also one cause of concern right and now the new concern here is to get the citizenship under the citizenship amendment act so this amendment act it is not saying anything about whether the citizens they are losing they will lose citizenship in their country or not okay in their home country or not so this is also one important question so if they are not losing their citizenship means they will be having citizenship in their home country and india so this will amounts to dual citizenship but in our constitution it is saying that we are following only single citizenship okay so this is one cause of concern we have to see about that so these are the some important dimensions that you have to see from this article and especially this article is very important for your prelims 2024 so there may be question there is 99% of chances to get question regarding the citizenship amendment act in your examination okay upcoming prelims so now let us see this article in detail so let us see the notes part and there are very less number of articles today and i am also going to give you one practice question so in yesterday's test for students under this prelims free mentorship so uh, for them we conducted test for polity and schemes in march current affairs so in that also we gave this question of citizenship amendment act context says that why it is a news the rules of citizenship amendment act do not require for foreign applicants to effectively renounce the citizenship of their native country so under this act it is saying that it is not required that the people who are going to get citizenship in india to renounce their citizenship of native country so it is creating a possibility of dual citizenship so this dual citizenship concept it is directly violating our citizenship act of 1955 and now petitioners are arguing that yes this concept will provide double citizenship or dual citizenship it is not according to the provisions of citizenship amendment act so this is the petition which filed in supreme court and we have to wait and watch like what will be the verdict of supreme court and next if you see the details it says that citizenship amendment act rules said that section 9 of citizenship amendment act of 1955 and even article 9 of indian constitution so they both clearly and explicitly prohibit this dual citizenship but we have to see like what supreme court verdict will be and if you talking about some facts regarding the citizenship amendment act so this citizenship amendment act we came up in year 2019 so in year we in this 2019 we came up with the citizenship amendment act so this act which seems to amend the citizenship amendment act of 1955 and this citizenship amendment act which provides citizenship on the basis of religion okay that to six communities who are non muslim communities like hindus parsis jains buddhist and christians and from which which and countries so they are from pakistan afghanistan and bangladesh these three countries are also very important for those people who who entered india before 31st december 2014 and even this act which exempts the members of six communities from any criminal case so if you are having any criminal case under this foreigners act and as well as passport act then they are not going to get citizenship and these two acts would specify punishment for entering the in our country illegally and staying here on expired visas and permits so under this also they will be getting punishment 
and I want to give you one prelims practice question. Try to uh, do this question and let me know your answer in the comment box for sure. So question is with reference to India, consider the following statements. So this question appeared in 2021. So first one is there is only, only one citizenship, one domicile. And this one is a citizen by birth only can become a head of the state. And a foreigner once granted citizenship cannot be deprived of it under any circumstances. You have to see which of the above statements are correct. So whenever you are saying only, you have to think about that statement wise. Because so these are the words that will be confusing the students. And now let us move on to our Hindu page. So let us see some more important articles. So here if you see this image, it is very interesting, right? So it is about space exploration. Yes or no? Yes, if you see this image, it is talking about the Indian space odyssey that is sounding rockets to Gaganyaan, a sky show of Gaganyaan mission launched by Jawaharlal Nehru Planetarium in Bangalore. So in Bangalore in this planetarium, so there was show which was which had been uh, launched, okay, that is regarding Gaganyaan mission. It is like a 30 minutes show that will be open to the public from Sunday. Okay, so this is the show. Yeah, and now let us see here what are the dimensions that you have to see. So here one important mission which is discussed that is Gaganyaan mission. And there is a high chance of getting question from this Gaganyaan mission from GS paper 3 under science and technology. From GS paper 3 under science and technology, yes, you can expect missions. Okay, so this missions which are launched by ISRO and also like NASA, European Space Agency. Chinese Space Agency, Japanese Space Institute is JAXA and Russia Space, uh, Space Institute is Roscosmos. Okay. So here this Gaganyaan mission is of ISRO's mission. So it is an ambitious mission to send astronauts. Uh, send astronauts or we can say humans into space that to till low earth orbit so here what you have to see so here you have to see like important features of this Gaganyaan mission and you have to see like what is the significance okay you have to see like what is the significance of this mission and there is a high chance of getting question in your prelims 2024 regarding this Gaganyaan mission for sure and now let us move on to the next article. Title says states offer thousands of hectares of degraded forest land for green credits. So here you have to see like two important keywords. First one is degraded forest land. Second one is green credits. And apart from that this article is talking about one important program that is green credit program. So now let us see the dimensions. So this article is related to soil erosion. So soil erosion is one of the important repeated theme where UPSC asks a question here prelims and as well as means from geography. So here you have to know about what is this deforestation and exactly what is the meaning of degraded land. You have to see about this degraded land and in this degraded land you have to see what are the causes of this degraded land and you have to see like what is the impact and what are the measures can be taken. So this is the one important dimension. And second one is you have to see about what is this green credits or like what is this green credits program. Okay, you have to see what is this green credit program. Especially you have to see like what are the features of this green credit program and what is the significance. 
okay what is the significance of this key there is a chance of getting question regarding your prelims 2024 from this green credit program okay and this topic is important from your gs paper one here we will be connecting geography along with this uh, we will be connecting with gs paper to that is polity and governance and you have to see about even gs paper 3 environment and ecology so this single topic we can see from all these three subjects point of view so here now let us see the notes part so why does it use our union environment ministry our union environment ministry announced the rules for what for green credits program so our environment ministry had been released rules for green credits program 10 states have been identified okay 10 states they have been identified parcels of degraded forest land and if you see total amount of this degraded land is around 3853 hectares and that will be available for individuals now that degraded land is available for individuals and as well as groups public and private sector units to earn and to potentially trade green credits so we can earn and we can potentially trade with this green credits so this is the context of why it is in news and if you see what is this green credit program so actually this program it is focusing on incentivizing environmentally conscious particles and practices and as well as we want to promote like sustainable lifestyle through market based mechanism so especially this program it is promoting like sustainable lifestyle and we can focus on this market based mechanism and as per this green credit scheme here especially individuals industries former producer organizations and as well as urban local bodies gram panchayats and as well as private sector so they are among a host of other entities and they can earn this green credits for undertaking environment friendly actions so if you are doing like friendly actions environment friendly actions you will be getting this green credits and actually whatever the green credits that you are getting so you can trade on a domestic market platform as well so these green credits that will be over and above current disclosure of carbon credits and any activity generating green credits under this gcp that is green credit program that will also receive carbon credits under carbon credit trading scheme also so in this way we are especially focusing on removal or reducing of this carbon emissions into atmosphere so actually so what are the actions that you can do okay to get this green credits you can go for tree plantations you can go for water management you can go for sustainable agriculture and you can go for waste management air pollution reduction mangrove conservation restoration and eco mark label development sustainable development and infrastructure development so you can do all those things such that you can promote environmental sustainability clear and now let us move on to our hindu and you can leave this city page simply there is nothing much important and you can go on to this states page and even in the states page i didn't get like important articles okay let us find out some articles okay leave this classifieds also so here you can see in this page number 6 47 medical students take ill to test positive for cholera so especially how many of you are from bangalore karnataka so in this bangalore medical college and research institute especially in this girls hostel so many of them they had been admitted into the hospital and two have tested for cholera okay so how can you read this article so in science and technology from your gs paper 3 you will be studying this chapter called as diseases okay so there will be one important chapter and you can get questions from this chapter for sure 
so here you will be studying about non communicable diseases and next one is communicable diseases so first one is non communicable and second one is communicable diseases so communicable means whenever you are communicating with others or shaking hands or cup or like kissing or hugging so here that disease will be transmitted from one person to another person that is called as communicable so non communicable means with communication they are not going to transmit for example hypertension heart diseases or lung diseases or kidney diseases or diabetes mellitus like that and communicable means it can be easily transmitted for example chicken pox for example corona virus for example ebola like that typhoid like that okay so here if you see this cholera cholera is caused by so tell me like cholera is a communicable or non communicable actually this cholera which is caused because of contaminated food and water so with this contaminated food and water we will be getting this cholera and this cholera is caused by bacteria called, called as vibrio cholerae okay and here you have to see like what are the signs and symptoms so actually earlier so this cholera is like one of the important disease which is leading to the high infant mortality rate okay and even you have to see like what is the treatment for this cholera so all these are very important from the science and technology from gs paper 3 point of view so if you are getting any disease in you so don't leave that just have a brief idea regarding what is that at least so whether it is like a protozoa causing disease or bacteria causing disease or virus causing disease or you can see like what are the signs and symptoms of that disease or what is the treatment plan so in this way you have to cover this disease topic clear and there are many diseases in use so you have to cover all of those because we can't predict like which disease will come in the nears okay so we don't take any choice because it will be also very interesting and you can know about that disease and even there is a high chance like if you are becoming a civil servant there you will be coming across this type of conditions like the patients will will be facing this disease in your area and how you are going to take the steps so for that purpose this knowledge is very important and even in your family life or in your personal life yes you have to know these diseases for sure and next if you move on let us see the article so don't uh, go through this elections 2024 page it is not at all useful okay so let us see this news page in this news page here you can see one article that is imf staff consistently inaccurate on india's growth forecast so this article is very important because here we are talking about this imf this international monetary fund so let me give you some dimensions like what you have to see from this article point of view so imf what is this imf that is international monetary fund so here you have to see why this imf is in news so what imf is saying about india's growth forecast so what it is saying about india's growth forecast and here you have to see like some important facts regarding imf and even you have to see like what is the significance of imf and recently uh, sri lanka pakistan they approached imf why so you have to see like what this is bop crisis so what is this b uh, meaning of this bop crisis that is balance of payment crisis so you have to know what is this balance of payment crisis and from india point of view we have to see whether india at least once it had been faced with this or not so what happened in that situation during 1991 so all these things are very much relevant and this topic is important from your gs paper 3 under economy 
so from economy point of view this article is very important clear and now let us see this article in detail if you see why it is in news here india's representative on imf board since november 2022 he said that so whatever the predictions made by imf about india's growth rate which had been accurate in contrast to imf staff estimates okay so board is having the prediction which is like nearly very much clear so now let us see some facts regarding this imf this international monetary fund so this imf international monetary fund it is an organization of how many countries 190 countries and each of which has representation to this imf executive board in proportion to their financial importance and most of the powerful countries in the global economy they have most voting power based on their financial importance so there is no equal voting rights in this imf and if you see what are the objectives of this imf so first one is to foster global monetary cooperation so especially we are focusing on global monetary cooperation and this one is we are focusing on securing of financial stability and we will be facilitating international trade and we will be promoting high employment and sustainable economic growth so we had like high employment and as well as we are focusing on this high employment rate because most of the countries after this covid 19 pandemic they are facing economic slowdown so in this scenario imf will play a very important role and this one is and reduce poverty around the world so they want to reduce the poverty around the world and macro economic growth we are focusing on that and we are focusing on policy advice and financing for developing countries and next one is we are focusing on promotion of exchange rate stability and as plus well international payment system so all these are the important objectives of this imf and now let us move on to our hindu and here you can see one article that is apparel exports may see mild recovery in financial 2025 after a sharp fall in financial year 2024 so in this 2024 there was like apparel industry apparel industry means nothing but textiles so they had been decreased demand but now we are seeing like some growth why there is some growth because of production linked incentive scheme okay so production linked incentive scheme because of the support from the government now we are seeing they are picking up and apart from that here you can see like red sea issue is one important cause of concern okay and next one here is so there might be increasing of apparels because of increasing of cotton yarn prices and because of increasing of wages okay so all these things that you have to see and in this science page there are two articles that i found very important so first one is avian influenza influenza a that is nothing but avian influenza so avian influenza is also called as bird flu so h5n1 detected in dairy cows in six states in us so here we are going to see this like how this avian influenza regarding virus that is affected this cows so this is the first time h5n1 which had been detected in cattle so because of this it is raising concerns about what are the possible transmission routes for this virus and so far this h5n1 virus detected over in 12 herds from six states like texas kansas michigan new mexico idaho and ohio so in these in these areas in these six states they found the spread of uh, this h5n1 virus to cattle and in texas wild birds cats that they were proximity to affected farms they have tested positive for the virus and the transmission of this virus within cattle has not yet been ruled out like how the transmission of this virus from birds to this cattle happened and in april 2024 a human infection of h5n1 was reported from texas and in general if you see the risk of infections for humans which is remaining very low 
but farm workers they are highly uh, at the risk of getting this infections and these h5n1 infections in humans they can range from mild symptom to severe illness and even we can see they will also cause death okay so this is about this article and we are going to see like facts regarding h5n1 virus don't worry and here you can see like over reliance on smear microscopy for tb detection so actually for detection of tb we are depending upon this smear microscopy so this article says that we are dependent like over like very high so here you have to see some dimensions so what are those dimensions so this article is talking about this tuberculosis and this is also important from our disease chapter from your science and technology and this disease which comes under communicable disease and this tuberculosis is caused by bacteria so which is that bacteria mycobacterium tuberculosis okay it is mycobacterium tuberculosis so here you have to see like what are the signs and symptoms and number of times we discussed about this topic in our hindu analysis yes okay so you have to see like what is the treatment so treatment is you are having first line and second line antibiotics so in antibiotics we have first line and second line so if there is any resistance that will cause multi drug resistance tb so why this resistance will happen in this tb drugs because we have to take antibiotics for minimum 6 months of time so we are having a very long course of antibiotics so that there is a chance of getting resistance that will leads to multi drug resistance tb and next important thing here is you have to see like what are the schemes government came to address this tb and what is the target of our government of india to eliminate this tb so all these are the important dimensions that you have to see from this article point of view and number of times i discussed about the schemes for even we have like a financial assistance scheme of 500 rupees per month that is given by the government to the patients for nutritional support okay so we already discussed about this yes you have to do revision and next topic here is land slide alert can large land slides can be remotely detected in real time or not so here this article is also very important because if you have gone through your ncert class number 11th of geography class number 11th of ncert of your geography so you will be studying about this topic called as mass movements I saw no have you came across this topic of mass movements so in this mass movements so these are the movements which are under the influence of gravity so for example you will be studying about this landslides and even in your newspaper if you are following current affairs especially this himalayan states they are facing this landslides so here you have to know the dimensions like what is this landslide and you have to see like types of the landslides and you have to see like which areas they are prone which areas which are prone to this landslides and here you have to see the map map of this landslide vulnerable regions and not only from geography from disaster management from gs paper 3 point of view you will be also study in this landslides topic there you will be studying about pre disaster steps and during disaster steps and post disaster that is like rehabilitation and reconstruction rehabilitation and reconstruction that you will be studying from disaster management and you have to see like impact so how this climate change is impacting landslides and even from economy point of view so we are going for infrastructure development okay we are going for infrastructure development so because of this infrastructure development 
it is having an impact what is that it is having an impact negatively on environment it is having an impact which is negatively showing on environment and even it is having like landslides so you have to see all those important subjects like you have to cover geography disaster management environment and ecology and as well as economy from this topic point of view clear and now let us see the notes of these two articles together so first one is about landslide alert so now i want to say you one good news so this good news is now it is possible to remotely detect large landslides so we can detect now the large landslides within minutes of occurrence so within minutes of occurrence we can detect this large landslides and to quickly determine whether they are close to open water or not where they are exactly located whether there is any tsunami hazard or not so all these things we can understand okay with the improved science and technology and next if you see some more details researchers at this university of alaska fair banks they came up with a way to determine this landslide location and the volume of the things like lip debris that is going to come down and what will be like the potential impact and apart from this this might support even national oceanic and atmospheric administration goal that is to issue tsunami warning within 5 minutes of landslide so we are going to achieve that so this is a very good news and next one is the method involves like quickly identifying the landslides a uh, period and as well as waves and even we are going to record the seismic and we are going to even record the short period waves okay and we can also identify whether it is going to cause any earthquake or any glacier and uh, what are the cause of this landslide so all these things we can analyze with this new study so we have to like say thank god okay yes or no especially the students who are from this himalayan states so say thank god yeah next one here is i want to say something regarding this landslides so landslides they are geological phenomena so what happens in this landslide there is a very sudden and rapid movements of masses it may be either rock it may be either ice or soil or debris that will be come down the slope because of influence of gravity so because of this we can call this landslide as a mass movements and what are the causes the first one here is we can divide the causes into two types first one is natural causes and second one is man made or artificial causes so first natural causes because of heavy rainfall so whenever heavy rainfall happens it will trigger this landslides because it increases pore water pressure and the weight of the soil will be increases suddenly it will come down and if it is because of erosion so clay and vegetation which is present within the soil or rock which act as a cohesive elements and that will help to bind the particles together by removing these cohesive elements erosion will happens that will prone to landslides and as well as earthquake so there will be intense ground shaking which causes instability in the rocks for example soils that is thus it will also triggers landslides and as well as because of volcanic eruptions so ash debris which is deposited by this volcanic eruptions whenever they are overloaded across the slopes then that will be coming down because of instability so these are the natural causes and if you see like anthropogenic causes or the man made causes because of deforestation for example this is slow these are the plants that are present and they will be holding soil tightly so if you are going for deforestation what happens so land will become loose and that will causes landslides and as well as encroachment in vulnerable terrains so actually what happen nowadays humans they are encroaching this lands and prone areas for example this hilly areas so that is also led to like construction activities in these areas and increase the changes of uh, increase chance of this landslides of seen and this one is uncontrolled excavations unauthorized or poorly planned excavation activities for example mining quarrying etc they destabilize the slopes and they increases the chances of landslides and this one is climate change 
So climate change which mainly caused by various anthropogenic activities. Okay, that led to abrupt alterations in the precipitation patterns and even that led to increasing of extreme weather events. Okay, so that will lead to the severity of landslides. So this is very important. And next one is influenza A H five N one detected in dairy cows in six states in the U S. So I have to see this. Very important. So already discussed about what happened, right? So now let us see like what are the some important facts regarding this H five N one type of influenza. So H five N one is a type of influenza virus. This causes highly infectious, severe respiratory diseases in birds. and it's also called as bird flu or avian influenza and basically it is sub type of influenza a virus so influenza a virus you are classified by the sub type based on the properties on their surface proteins we have h1n1 h2 n2 so this is h5n1 and next one is there are around 18 different types of hemoglobin sub types that is h sub types and 11 or n sub types that is h18n12 H one to H eighteen and N one to N eleven respectively. Okay, so in this way, so we have the classification of this influenza virus. So these are the very important articles that appeared in our today's Hindu newspaper. So nothing much to discuss more than this. And that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this class. And don't forget to like and do subscribe to Rathod Science Academy. And please do join the courses that we are offering. And if you want to get the notes, yes, you can join the Telegram channel. Link is given in description box so that you can get the notes of this class. And if you want to take any online course of single subject, you can visit our Rathod Science Academy website. And there you can purchase the course after watching the demo videos. So that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching, and please do subscribe to Rathod Science Academy.